Good day, uh, everyone, wherever you are attending this Watchman conference. Those of you who are live in Lagos, and those of you who are watching uh, through uh, the internet, through whatever media all over the world, I'd like to say a good day to you once more. Uh, I'm excited to be in the Watchman conference this year. Every year, by the grace of God, we've had the mercy of God bringing forth his word to us, God bringing forth revelation to us. I'm excited about the theme of the meeting this year. Uh, because uh, like us, um, as at all the years that are before, uh, Pastor Francis and Apostle uh, Chenyere have been able to articulate clearly the burden of the Lord you know, for this season. And I'm happy to be part of this whole transaction. Uh, for those of you who know me, uh, or those of you who don't know me, I've been in prophetic ministry for close to three decades, uh, perhaps a little over three decades. And uh, the order of the prophetic, the way it works in my life, is I am the kind of prophet that has his ear to the ground uh, in relation to the issues that have to do with the church of God. I am concerned about the movements in the spirit. I'm concerned about what God is doing per time. Like the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The way the prophetic anointing works in my life is enabled me to, 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 to keep track of the seasons, keep track of the movements of God. And I say that not to elevate myself or any sort of thing. I say that to say this, that uh, one of the major uh, purposes of prophetic ministry in the earth is actually to bring us into sync with, with God, to bring us into greater partnership with what God is doing. Uh, we've been called as the ecclesia or as the people of God to be partners with God. We are co-laborers together with God, just like Jesus before us. Uh, Jesus said, uh, my father works hitherto and I walk. Again, he said, I can of myself do nothing. Then elsewhere, he says, uh, the, even the words that I speak, it is my father that doeth the works. Uh, we see in the ministry of Jesus that Jesus didn't just do what he thought was a good idea. He didn't just go where he thought was, was interesting to go to. He was bound by the will of God. He was bound by the knowledge of, of, of what God was doing. His actions were circumscribed by the movements of God and the Spirit. And so it is with us as we walk in the steps of Jesus. We don't just want to do anything because it is a good idea. We just don't want to say anything because it's good to say. We want to say what he is saying. We want to go where he is going. We want to do what he is doing. And so it becomes pertinent that there has to be the prophetic ministry that enables us to listen in the Spirit, to set our gaze upon the Father, to, 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 to track his movement, to see what is at the core of his heart and what he's executing part time because that is how God works. So um, my prophetic ministry, you know, has executed in that way. I'm interested in what God is doing, what God is saying. And I want to say to you categorically that right now there's a strong emphasis in the spirit on the whole issue of Zion. And I think that uh, 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 Apostle Francis has, has nailed it, you know, very, you know, like spot on, you know, in bringing this, this theme about the, seven, the, the 12 gates of Zion. Um, there's this uh, prophetic uh, a kingdom conference that we hold every year that's called Voice to the Churches. A voice of the churches are, are people who gather together, you know, from all over the place, you know, to be part of this, us trying to decode, trying to discern or track the movements of God. And um, we've held this conference for about 10 years, this being the 10th year for which this conference has been heard. And many times after the conference, uh, people begin to hear the theme of the conference reverberate across the grapevine of the church, especially from the West. People begin to say, this other prophet that's, that's, that's renowned, you know, is saying this. This other prophet is saying this. This other prophet is saying this. And uh, so somehow God has validated to us in the past 10 years that we've been hearing him. And we're happy about that. The uh, Last year, God led us to begin, you know, um, a regional conference in the city of Port Harcourt. By next weekend, this coming weekend, that is next uh, 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 Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll be in Port Harcourt again to hold the second regional conference. The theme for that conference is simply Zion. It's Zion. You know, and because God has begun to talk to us about the whole issue of Zion. Last week, I saw a friend of mine you know, somewhere uh, uh, in Lagos had put a conference together, and the theme again of that meeting was something related to Zion. Um, the international uh, 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 a conference for the Voice of the Churches holds in December this year. The theme for that conference is the uh, uh, a recovery. And the whole issue of the recovery of the lost testimony is in view. And what we're looking at again is the recovery of Zion and all of that. So I said all that to say that we're right now 
looking at Zion, the Lord has his mind upon this concept of Zion, upon this whole reality called Zion. And so I want you to pay attention, very, pay very close attention because the Spirit is saying, is saying something like in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, uh, when John um, was uh, writing to the churches, the Lord was say by him, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, um, I know that the Watchman uh, uh, Prophetic Conference is a prophetic conference. It's not a teaching platform. And so I shall lean towards the prophetic more than I shall lean towards teaching. Uh, we can go off, you know, a tangent describing the gates of Zion, bringing forth exegesis about Zion, about the gates, and showing forth the meanings and all those things. And I'm sure that one or two people may be led in that direction, and perhaps we would need some prophetic preaching or some prophetic teaching. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring forth the word of the Lord or the burden of the Lord in relation to Zion and the gates of Zion. And I'm going to speak from my own, from my own um, position from the place of spiritual competence and from the grace that's been allowed me to listen in upon what Zion is saying. Because Zion is actually a reality in the spirit. Zion is a living thing. Zion is not a dead thing. There's nothing that God does that is dead. Uh, in our minds, when we read the description of the city of God in Revelation chapter 21, we have the picture of a, of, 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 a, of a city or we have the picture of a building and all of that. And somehow it is usually difficult to translate spiritual things you know, to, the, to the mind of a man. Because the spiritual things that are high level spiritual information or high level spiritual intel are communicated through imagery, through pictures. So for example, the prophet will see a, a, a city or he will see an army or he will see an object or something. And he's using that to, 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 to interpret something that is deep, something that is spiritual, something that is divine. But often because of the way that our imagination works, the infirmity in our mind, we are stuck with a city. And so even though you've read in the book of Revelation chapter 21, the angel said to John, it says, come. And as one of the angels said to John, he says, come, let me show you the, 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 the bride, the bride, the, 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 the lamb, the, the wife of the lamb. He was showing him the bride, he was showing him the wife of the lamb. And so we know that it is a bride. The, because the angel said, I want to show you the bride. You know, but immediately he takes him up to a high mountain and then he sees a city. And then the Bible begins to describe like solid city, walls and gates and foundations. Then we forget the fact that we're looking at a bride. We're looking at a, a, a person. We're looking at that which is married to that which is connected to the lamb. We're seeing a city. So in our minds, immediately, we come into these architectural structures where we're looking at buildings and all of those things. But let me say right off the cuff that Zion is not, a, it's not first of all, a physical building. Zion is a, is, is, a, is, is a realm in God. Zion is a dimension of God. Zion is, is, is a state in God. Zion is a place in God. Zion is a spiritual reality that we come into. There are many things that may be used to describe it, but in the end, we're looking at a, we're looking at a, a, a city of light. We're looking at an estate in God. We're looking at a new creation state. We're looking at the, the perfections inside of God. Because Zion has been described by many, many names, but we'll get to that shortly. But let me uh, 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 start like this by acknowledging my, uh, my host, uh, Pastor Francis and Pastor Chinyere. I want you to know that I love you very, very much from my heart. And I feel it's, I count it an honor to be on your platform once more this year, you know, to bring forth the word of the Lord to you, uh, uh, to the people of God. I do have a word of the Lord for you as individuals uh, before I speak the word of the Lord to the people. And um, I believe that uh, I heard the Lord say that he's, he's going to comfort you and he's going to bring you into rest. God, he's, he's going to administer comfort to you and then he will bring you into rest. Then I saw also uh, uh, a, 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 a realm of establishment, of divine establishment that is coming to you and that is coming to your work. I see God touching certain depths inside of your heart and bringing healing in such a way that you would not need any man, no matter what he is or who he is, to validate you in order for, for your ministry uh, to have its influence or in order for you to be comfortable in what God has called you to do. You not need any, 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 any associations, any connections to anybody, whoever that person may be. The, 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 the purpose for connections and associations may be so that joints will supply, but not so that you will be validated. Because on the inside of you, you will see the hand of God validating you. On the inside of you, you will be comfortable inside of the skin of the operation of, the, of, of, the, of the, 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 the ministry that God has given to you. You have a ministry to the church at this time. And the ministry has diverse fronts and diverse faces. But by the grace of God, you will go from one face to another until you realize everything that God has given you. This is the word of the Lord for you. I pray that... Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, you, you find the interpretation very well within your spirits. Amen. So uh, perhaps at this point, I should just say a word of prayer and then we'll, cons- we'll, we'll proceed with the thought. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of being called to speak your word to your people or to bring your burden to the people of God. Grant utterance to me in the name of Jesus and grant understanding to the people. Let the ears hear, let the hearts respond, let the eyes see in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so um, I'm going to begin uh, 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 like this. I have uh, perhaps two or three concerns in the spirit, uh, two or three cardinal concerns or cardinal burdens in my heart. And of course, you know that the word burden uh, is a word massa, which actually is the, the, is the word for, or not word for the prophetic. It speaks about uh, the prophetic burden or the prophetic concern that God does in God's heart, that God transfers to the prophet. The prophet carries this concern and then interprets it into a thought, says the Lord. So I have a burden, you know, uh, two or three burdens, you know, uh, for this uh, a conference. And the first one would be to uh, the wider church out there. Because I know that many people will be watching this video from different places. People who do not consider themselves part of the advancing church. People who may not uh, 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 define themselves as people who have been on spiritual pilgrimage. People who don't even know what all of these things mean. People who are just hopping upon this video for the first time. And uh, they're they're listening in to hear the word of the Lord. Um, This first word will go to that class of people. It will go to the wider church because there's the word of the Lord in that connection. I'd like to read uh, from a scripture in the book of Lamentation, uh, chapter 1 and in verse number 4. Uh, before I read that, let me just give a little background. You know, um, the book of Lamentation was written by the prophet Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah actually wrote the book of Jeremiah, and then again he wrote the book of Lamentation. Jeremiah was that, that prophet they called the weeping prophet. He was weeping because the things that he saw were things that were heavy. They were things that broke his heart. There were things that concerned what God was going to do with Judah, what God was going to do with his people. And there was no, they, they were not good news at all. Jeremiah began to see that the people of God were going to be taken into captivity. They were going to be removed from their own land and brought into, into the land of Babylon, where they will be there for 70 years. Now, 70 years is a long time. I'm not 70 years years yet all of my life uh, together i'm not yet 70 and i imagine you know, what 70 years is like so the people are going to be in in, in babylon for 70 years and they're going to be under hard servitude they're going to be serving the, the pagan king in a in a pagan culture and then zion and, and, and jerusalem and judah w- w- was going to be desolate it was going to languish it was going to be to to, to, to be an eyesore a reproach to the nations it was going to be vacant it was going to be like a like a ghost town a haunted town it was going to be a, 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 to, to be a, a bereft of all the sounds of joy, all the music, all the songs of the Lord, all the songs of Zion, all the mirth, all the merriment, all the feasts of the Lord, and all of those things will cease to be, you know, for 70 years. It was going to be a terrible condition. Jeremiah sees all of this. He's crying out to Israel and saying, you better turn back on your ways, better repent and come back to God. But Israel, like, uh, 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 refuses the, the warnings of the Lord as she has done in the past generations. And so Jeremiah is a, is a prophet with a heavy heart. So he writes the book of, of, of um, Jeremiah, you know, or he, he, he prophesies the, the contents of Jeremiah to tell the people about the plan of the Lord to take them into Babylon, but what the Lord will do afterwards, you know, uh, when they are they, 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 they they done their time in Babylon. Then again, uh, he writes the book of, 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 of uh, um, Lamentation. History tells us that in the year 940 BC, uh, the kingdom of Israel was divided between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Of course, you know that uh, um, Israel asked for a king in Saul. And then Saul became the first king of Israel. After Saul's passage, David comes onto the throne. The days of David were the days when, when, when Israel came into the, the golden age you know, of, of, uh, of, of her kingdom. And then the golden age bled right into the days of Solomon. And after that, everything you see after that is a decline. Israel reached the peak of its perfection. And in the heart of it was that David understood that um, uh, um, where he was before in Ziklag, which was his stronghold, was not the same thing as the stronghold of the Lord. And so he needed to find the Lord's stronghold. He needed to relocate his epicenter from a place of his own personal competence, a place of his own strength. 
a place of his own of his own security into the place of the Lord's security, the place of the Lord's strength, the place that the Lord defines as his epicenter. So what does he do? He goes and takes over the, the stronghold of the Jebusites and then on the mountain where the Jebus used to be, he sacks them and then that mountain called the mountain of Zion, there he plants his house and there he plants the, 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 the tent of God and that will be the future place of the temple of God. So Zion became the place that David uh, uh, took so that the house of God will be there. And like we know David is a prophet, and everything he did was based on patterns that he saw in heaven. There is a heavenly position where there is Mount Zion. And that Mount Zion is the city of God. It's the dwelling place of, Zion, of, of God. It is a place where God domiciles himself and where God reveals his glory. Because the Bible says uh, in a scripture in the book of Psalms, it says, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will reveal himself in his glory. The Lord domiciles himself in Zion in glory. And so Zion is a house of glory. Zion is an asset of glory. Zion represents the glory, the glory of God. The glory of God is more than the luminous shining of God. It's more than just God shining forth. It's more than just bright light. The glory of God is a dimension of God's perfection. The glory of God is, is a whole economy. It's a whole proceeding of God. It's a, it's a whole realm you know, of, 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 of divine doings and divine beings you know, that, that, that is at the peak of all that God is. And all of that you know, is going to be communicated in Zion. And so David takes the trunk of Zion and then passes on you know, the, 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 the task of building the house to Solomon. Solomon builds the house, you know, and then Solomon reigns in Israel, you know, for several years until the death of Solomon, the kingdom was divided into two among Jeroboam and Rehoboam. And, the, uh, and this was the southern kingdom having two, two tribes and the northern kingdoms having ten tribes. Now, the northern kingdom was called Israel. Now, Israel was, had this propensity to fall into idolatry. So very soon, she mixed with the nations of the earth. She, the Assyrians overran her and then uh, uh, established the... the, 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 the the capital was in Samaria, and of, as you know, the Samaria, you know, was a place of mixture. It was a place where the people of God were, were brought into, into, in, into, into uh, uh, affiliation with other nations. They mingled with other nations, and then they mingled with the gods of other nations. And so Israel represented a, a ground of mixture. But Judah, you know, was pure for a while. But even Judah herself began to de depart from the standards of God. And then God said, I'm going to send you to Babylon, to the king of, 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 of Nebuchadnezzar, to the king of Babylon, that's Nebuchadnezzar, to discipline you for a period of time until I bring you back into this land. And so we see that in 606 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar arrived, you know, in, in, in Judah, and then he sacked the city. And takes away all the nobles. He takes away all the all, all the princes. He takes away you know all the all all all, all those who had any kind of uh, a, a, a promise in their lives and carries them as slaves to Babylon. And then uh, we're told uh, from the scriptures that in the uh, uh, twenty years later, the king Zedekiah, who was left in 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 in, in Judah, rebels against the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon gets mad. This was 20 years later. And then comes back to, to Judah and then sacks the city, carries the rest of the people that were left into Babylon, except the feeble ones, or the, the people that might consider very useless, like the old, the, 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 the weak, the sickly, the beggarly ones. He left them out you know, in Judah and then took anything that had any kind of value or any kind of promise. You know, the first time that the, the exiles were carried into Babylon, uh, Ezekiel the prophet was one of those who were carried. And... Jeremiah remains still, you know, in, in Judah. The second time when Zedekiah comes and sacks the city, this is what he does. He burns the temple, burns it to the ground. Then he burns also, he destroys the walls and destroys the whole of the city and turns it into a ghost town. And so many, many years later, w w when we look at, 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 at Judah, we see a place that is totally desolate, a place that has no glory, a place that is a worse being, a place that used to be a center of divine activities, a center of joy and glory in the heydays of David, in the heydays of Solomon, the where, 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 when gold was common, you know, like, like and, and silver was common like, like a, a sand and all of those stuff. All of those days were gone. Now the city was in ruins. And um, it is into this that Jeremiah writes the scripture that I'm about to read right now in Lamentation chapter 1 verse 4. And this is what it says. The ways of Zion mourn, because no one comes to the solemn feasts. All her gates are desolate, and her priests sigh, her virgins are afflicted. 
Now, this is a sorry state to, uh, 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 to, to be in concerning Zion. The way to Zion Mount. Uh, there's, a, there's a man called Dominic Bali who actually sang a very beautiful song based on this, on this scripture. He says, On the rocky road where the streets are worn On the rocky road where the streets are worn While her daughter slave the road to Zion Mount the road to Zion Mount she called but no one comes while her daughter slaves the road to Zion Mount he said the road to Zion Mount that's what uh, 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 Jeremiah tells us he said the road mourns. it says because no one comes to her feast and all her gates are desolate and her priests sigh her virgins are afflicted now let me look at the word uh, the gates are desolate. What does that mean? The word desolate actually is a word that means to be destitute, to be waste, to be stunned, or to go numb. Now, the whole concept of gates uh, uh, in old, in ancient culture, actually also in, 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 in our times, is gates define dimensions of entry and exit. Gates allow you to gain access into something or gives you entrance into something. So the gates are the portals, the openings by which Zion may be ac accessed. Now there is Zion, you know, which is a city of God. There is Zion, which is a dimension of high life in God. There is Zion, which is a realm that the church ought to come into. And like it was in the days of, 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 of Jeremiah, the road to Zion is languishing again. The road to Zion mourns because not many people are coming by that way. We have Zion is, Zion is a city that's on a hill. Zion is a high city. You know the scripture that says, Great is the Lord, Psalm 48, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole world is Mount Zion. It says beautiful in elevation, beautiful in its loftiness. Now, in about 150 scriptures that refer to Mount Zion, most of them describe Zion as Jerusalem or can be used interchangeably for Jerusalem. And then Psalm 122 tells us about Jerusalem. It says, uh, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of our God, to the testimony of Israel. So whenever you go to Zion, you went up. Because Zion is a high land. Zion is, 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 is a high place in God. Zion is an elevated place in God. Now, the burden of the Lord and the word of the Lord to the church is this. Much of the church has been in the plains. Most of the church have been in the valleys. Most of the church have been in Shina. Shina is a plain. Shina is a place of, of personal comfort. Shina is a place of where, 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 where God does not intervene too much with the things that men do. But there is a place called Zion. There is a high place in God. I know that the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we've come to Mount Zion. And that's a spiritual reality. But in our souls, we have not all come to Mount Zion. Not everybody in, in the church is hungering for Zion. And now Zion is calling us. Like, a, like, a, like a, a, a songwriter says, Zion is calling us to a higher place of praise. Zion is calling again. Zion is reaching out. There is a, there's a high land, a high place. Like in the days of, of, of Shamgar, Judges chapter 5, uh, 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 the son of Anath, and in the days of Jael, Deborah says that the highways were unoccupied, that travelers went by byways. Those who were ascending, those the wayfarers, the pilgrims sought to ascend into the presence of God through byways because the highways have been lost. Today again, the highways have been lost. And the gates, which are the entry points into Zion, are languishing. The gates are crying. The gates are desolate. The gates are saying no one, no, no one passes by. Actually, one of the words uh, 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 for desolate uh, is a word that actually means uh, uh, something that drizzles. It's like people drizzle. There's a drizzle. just like, like, like a, 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 a pass a meager entrance into Zion. And now the Lord says to the church, it is time for you to begin to set your gaze upon Zion. It is time for you to begin to desire Zion. It is time for you to begin to long after Zion. I was teaching in church sometime last week and I, I, I showed them a picture. Many times when we read the book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra and we, or we read the account, you know, uh, uh, maybe in the book of, of, of Daniel concerning the desolation of Zion. We usually see it from Babylon. We usually look at it from the standpoint of Babylon, that, uh, uh, from, the, from the eyes of the exiles in Babylon. But I took a journey to look at Jerusalem or Zion from inside of Zion. I looked at it, I, I, I positioned myself not where Nehemiah was standing, 
not where not where uh, 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 Israel was standing. But I, I, I sat down like one who had visited Zion before many years ago and who had gone somewhere, maybe gone to the east or gone somewhere, and then many years later he returns back and then he, he's torn by what he sees. He's looking upon Zion and he's saying, why is this golden city desolate? Why is this city you know, empty? Why is this city like in a cursed place? Why is there desolation? If you know anything about the way that God judges and God curses, one of the, the, high, the high judgment that God gives to cities or nations or people is to curse them with desolation. When you are desolate, it means you are totally barren. It means that there is no life in you. It means that death reigns there. You know, and, we, and so this person who is standing in Zion is looking at it and saying, why is this place so sparse? So empty, so vacant, so barren. And that is what Zion is saying right now. Zion is saying to the church, it's time to come up to a higher place. It's time to come up to a place of praise. It's time to come up to a place of nobility, a place of majestic thought. It's time to come into the deep revelations of God. It's time to come into the place of God's perfection. Because Zion is perfection. And then the gates, the, the gates are open to let people in. Because we see later on in the book of, of Revelations that the gates shall not be shut. The gates are not shut. It's just that the people are not coming through the gates. So the scripture says, go through. Go through the gates. It's a command to us. Go through. It is time to go through the gates. God is calling on the church. You have dwelt in a plane for too long. You have dwelt in Ziklag, your own personal stronghold. You have dwelt in the, in the caves. You have dwelt in the place of comfort. Now you need to come to the high lands. You need to come to the high places in God. You need to come from where you were. Now the, 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 the places where the church has been in, have not been able to confront the enemies that have come to our gate. The church in recent time has been besieged by a lot of issues, a lot of concerns, a lot of enmity. And we find ourselves weak. We find ourselves weakened. We find ourselves unable to answer the enemies at our gate. And like in the days of Hezekiah, this is a day of shame, a day of rebuke, a day of disgrace, a day of the covering of the faith. Because the children come to birth and there is no strength to give forth or to give birth. We have come to a place where all that we knew and all that we have done seem to fall short of the perfection that is needed to confront the enemies in these last days. Zion is saying you need to modulate. You need to come up hither. You need to come to a new place. Wherever you are, wherever you are, as a pastor, as a, as a bishop, as a reverend, as a pope, as a believer in church, you don't even need to wait for your pastors to begin to define where to go. You need to begin to understand that there's a high place that we need to come into. There is a Zion reality. There's a reality of the divine perfections of God. There's a reality of the divine joy. There's a reality of the finish that is called Zion that we need to come into. Zion is coming. The Zion has been mourning. No one passes through the gates. But today the Lord is saying, the gates are open. The gates of Zion is open. I speak to the church out there. There is a movement. There is a, another exodus. There is another migration of those coming into Zion. Now, years later, 70 years later, after Israel had done her time, God stirred up the, the spirit of Cyrus, who made a decree that the people would return back. So we see a return to Zion. We see people coming in. And then, but unfortunately, at the time, there were no gates anymore. There was no, no gates because the gates had been totally decimated. The walls had been pulled down and all of those things. God had to raise Nehemiah to come and build the walls again and then set up the gates. And then the gates signified the, 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 the appropriate entry points into the city. So there are gates of Zion where the means by which people come into the city. Those gates are being administered again. Now, I don't want you to see the word, the word gate as a physical door, as a physical entry point. See it as opportunities in God. See it as, 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 as grace seats in God that minister to the people so that the people can come in. The gates present interface for us. They present the, 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 the place out of which we may touch the reality of the city. The city of God is a high life in God. The city of God is a, is a civilization in God. The city of God is a divine intelligence. It's a, it's a realm of, of, of forever union with God. And the gates are open to us again saying, come up hither. This is the word of the Lord, you know, for the church. Wherever you are, I want you to know that Zion is calling you. Zion is saying, come up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, um, in the next talk that I shall have, I will push this thought further. I want you to stay tuned. I want you to invite other people to a part of this whole uh, uh, transaction in the spirit. God bless you. Amen. Amen.